If you died tonight, where would you be in the morning? You know how you got saved? What came across you? I will never forget, I was at Shady Woods Baptist Church and I went because an 80 year old lady bugged me to death. And I showed up there and I can't remember one thing. I've told you this a bunch of times, but it's the only life I got, this is one story. So this man started singing, if you died tonight, where would you be in the morning? The first time he said that, I was like, my God, it's a terrible song. Why would you sing that in here? This dude's weird. And so I sat there, I kept sitting there, and he's like, everyone stand to your feet. If you died tonight, where would you be in the morning? I was like, this guy is going to keep on. He sang it 746 times, the same line. I don't know how many times he was in it until finally I thought about it. And it hit me, Chris, that he was talking to me. Not him, him. He wanted to know, so do you know where you'd be in the morning? I had never thought about where I'd be in the morning. I'd never thought about dying. Why would I? I was 20 years old. But the moment that hit me, I knew right then, like I had never encountered him. I have no idea who he is and or what this guy's talking about. If I died in the morning, there's no way I could go there because I don't even know who that is and know anything about it. But I didn't feel bad or afraid. I felt compelled. I didn't feel like he was mad. I don't remember how he was explained to her, but I never felt like he was going, and you son, you know what'll probably happen to you? You see this hellfire? I never felt that. I felt some warm embrace, like something was t wanted to carry me to the front. I literally grabbed that pew in front of me and was like, oh my God. And I, have you ever sweated, but it didn't show up, but you could feel your whole body go, mm -hmm. and a run of moisture run over you is like, mm -hmm. Somebody, this might be happening right now. You're like, how does he know? This is weird. Can't wait to leave. Or this might happen before you leave. But I literally stood there and I almost sat down. I was like, because I could feel my legs wanting to move. It's, it wasn't nothing like showed up. I didn't see it. I could just feel it. And my heart began to pound. Not like I was running, but like a, every heartbeat, I could hear it in my ears. It was going, mm -hmm. and I could feel it. And I was like, am I dying now? Like almost like, is he here? Please stop singing this song. I wanted to say, stop. And the next thing I know, something in me just said, go up there. I'll never forget there was a lady that was the male lady. Miss Neal was her name. I didn't know her. She knew me because I hung out in trailer parks on Highway 80 and caused conflict at one night. And, but she come down there and she sat down and, and she was like, son, you know what just happened? And I was like, I wouldn't even look up. I said, no ma'am. I didn't even look at her, I didn't know who it was. And she said, the Lord's working in your life. And I, I man, I'm 20 years old and I meant for, in my life, I would not cry in front of anybody. That was like my goal. Right, Mike? Huh? Like, I am not crying in front of nobody. I'm a full grown man. I mean, maybe if somebody real close to me dies, but I probably ain't gonna do it in front of nobody. And I was crying and I was trying not, you know, crying like, you start moving, you're like, oh, they're gonna notice. My back's probably jerking. I mean, I'm literally thinking through these things. Like, I'm mad at myself. And then I just broke. I said, I don't know. Something's happened to me and something, God's doing something and salvation come over my life. And I'm telling you, I didn't go there wanting it, desiring it, believing it, seeking after it. He ran after me. I had never, never in my life desired it. He desired me. I couldn't believe he set that whole thing up for me. And now for, it's been, that's been more than five years ago at least. Um, maybe 25 or 30. Um, now I look back at the history and think. And so now when I sit in a room like this, I can't see you, but if I could, I think I believe for you. Like, I don't care what you came here with. 
I don't care what you know about him or don't know about him. I don't care how long you've done this or how, where you've been and done this before. I believe something supernatural for the people that, I don't just say it, Dean, I actually believe it. I believe before you leave this room that the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm not talking about in some weird way, it may be weird, it's gonna be weird because you know why? Because I can't see him. He don't come up and introduce himself. He's not like, oh, I'm Holy Spirit. I want you to see me real quick. You won't ever see me again. He don't do that. He just comes over your life and you're like, and sometimes it's tongues and sometimes it's just singing and sometimes it's lifting your hands and sometimes it's loving and sometimes it's giving and sometimes it's giving yourself. I mean, the Holy Spirit urges you and nudges you to do all of those things. And I just believe that it happens and gonna happen over and over. I can see too many of my family members and friends. Some of these friends I've had for a lifetime. Some of them I've only known for a year and I've watched such a transformation. I've watched people like Tommy come in here high and then come in here teaching class. I've watched him walk in and sit on the back, very back row on a Wednesday night. And when we had, we had the lights on then, so uh, I can see you and sit in the very back. And, and then he, somebody introduced me to him and he's just like, man, I messed up. I mean, literally that's what he said. And I need some help and I don't know how to fix this. And, and, and in that moment, I don't, I'm not like, oh bro, dang bro, you jacked up, man. You woo, Lord Jesus, man, woo, woo. You do need some help. You might want to get shipped off somewhere. You know, I can say, I can look at him in the face and say, I, I, I believe you can change. And all it took was somebody believing with him. It wasn't just me though. He had a friend that brought him here, that escorted him through it, walked him through it, talked him through it, walked and spent some time with him. And now we're sitting in the glory, in the, in the aftermath of something supernatural that happened, that addiction had been on a man's life his whole life. Nobody, and listen to me, you know, it's way more exciting than that. You just wasn't the addicted one. You wasn't the one almost de dead. Last week we baptized a man that had, been, had almost died several times. That, that's something supernatural. Today he's in a program being restored and renewed by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. That don't just happen. I watched the Spirit leave his body in a moment. I don't know if he was here. I don't know if you remember. You might not even have been engaged. You might have been in the back talking. But up front in his water, something supernatural was happening. 